What a time to be alive, the age of information. So many people questioning creation. Come, take a seat or step outside to have a conversation. Let's listen, observe, and respond with compassion and truth. Hey, everybody. I uh, just wanted to introduce myself. I am Kyle Cassidy. I'm the host of the Fearless Shepherds podcast and really someone who has been called to start this Fearless Shepherds movement. And um, this started in prayer. I was asking God for direction. I was asking God for a sign as to a time that all of us were living in in regards to COVID. And it was a confusing time. It was a time for me of... Um, of uncertainty, of confusion. And I was really praying a lot, praying for an understanding of, of why this was all happening. And God came into my, my heart, my soul, and, and let me know that, that it was happening for a reason. And in Revelation, it translates to a lifting of the veil. So I truly believe that this time that we're in, although it is a trial and it, it it's it's something that we can't really put words into describing there's an opportunity for all of us to dive inward and for me it was a time to pause and it was a time to become closer to my personal practice not only physically and mentally but spiritually and to pray more to be in my bible more and to realize that there's more to this life than the earth has to offer and that's when the fearless shepherds came into my came into my heart, my mind, and my soul of, of an opportunity to reinvest spirituality into the things that I was already doing. So as some of you may know, I'm a yoga teacher, been teaching for about five, six years now, um, been training since about a year into COVID. So about two years now in personal training, helping people to find mindfulness and find health. And those two things are very important, our mindfulness and our, and our physical health. And those things have always come naturally to me. I've always lived a life that is what I would call healthy. I, I grew up in a family that really inspired me to be my healthiest self. And I grew up in a Christian family as well. And in life, I drifted from my faith. I thought that I could do it on my own. And I, I would play a large part of that to our culture and our society as a whole here in the United States um, of just a, a, a consumeristic, uh, pleasure-seeking escapism. And I fell victim to it. I was in different arenas that filled my pleasure centers in regards to, you know, brewing beer and um, entertainment and hospitality and, and different things and, and no knock towards these professions. They're beautiful professions. I still, uh, you know, enjoy seeing people thrive in those arenas, but I felt called to something bigger and my change really happened this was back in 20, I believe 2015, when I did uh, the yoga teacher training at the yoga loft in San Diego, big shout out to Steven and Daniela and Olga. Uh, that teacher training was life changing for me because it opened up my eyes to uh, different religions that I had never really known growing up. I grew up Christian. I was introduced to Buddhism and I was introduced to different practices of self mastery and it opened my heart back up to the Holy Spirit. And I was able to re-engage in church. I was able to re-engage in my Bible, re-engage in purpose. And that led me to make big changes in my profession, big changes in what I wanted to do and what I knew I was here to do, which is inspire people to shine light into people's lives through the way that I carry myself and the and the the daily habits that I that I've created over over these last six, seven years. And to look at where I am now and to look at the start of this podcast and the start of the community that we've been creating these last couple of years here in Los Angeles, I am divinely guided. And I feel like especially this last year, since 2022 has begun, I have let go of the wheel. 
and God is driving my vehicle. And the more that I trust in God and the more that I devote myself to what I believe it means to be a Christian, to selflessly serve, to praise the Father in heaven, to praise the mother here on earth and in our bodies, the Holy Spirit, I truly believe is that feminine and that that understanding of compassion, that understanding of forgiveness, and uh, really tapping into divine masculinity and what that means, how I can help my father and fathers and grandfathers heal from trauma and bring forward the ability and opportunity to talk, to clean out the closet, to share their struggles and their their hardships. We as men in the society that we live in today have a, uh, have a lot working against us. I think toxic masculinity and abuse and trauma has caused for what we see today in, in the society that we're in of, of, <clears throat> of masculinity being kind of demonized. And this is a part of the calling that I feel God compelling me to share is the importance of strong men and strong women in society and how when the pendulum is swinging back and forth, we're just knocking walls down. We're not creating any form of movement forward. We're only kind of like Gandhi said, an eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. We're just trying to combat one another with our trauma. So more trauma is not going to solve trauma. The only way to heal is to forgive. And that starts with forgiving yourself. So for me, it was a forgiveness of not stepping into the uncomfortabilities of the unknown because my faith wasn't at the bedrock of my life. And as I've developed my faith, as I've opened my Bible, as I've, as I've created these Bible studies and, and cultivated the community that I am creating, it's, it's helping me to realize that I, I'm protected, that I'm guided divinely by my creator. And then from my background of teaching yoga and opening up my, my eyes to these different cultures that have different beliefs, I also want to hold space for different faiths, walks, and create a, a safe space for people to share. So this podcast, the Fearless Shepherds podcast, it is four pillars. I want to inspire. I want to love. I want community. And I want to learn. So when I inspire, I'm inspiring Christ consciousness. Jesus Christ is an example of God's divinity and of God's love, of a perfect life. We should all be striving for perfection. And then we should realize that we're human and that we have sinned since day one and we will continue to sin and fall short. But the more we step into our divinity, the more that we repent for our sins. And that's the thing that turns people off a lot. It's like, ah, I kind of, I want to do what I want to do, but I want to have a kind of a, an ability to talk about it when I feel it's necessary. And I don't want to share my insecurities. I don't want to share my, my sins. That's so important. And that's what this community is about, is really about having a safe space to share our struggles just as much as we share our triumphs and our culture and society through social media and through media and through um, false narratives. We, we try to show that our life is so abundantly blessed and nothing is wrong and we're all good. And I fall victim to this as well. I think this podcast is a great way for us to open up about the things that we struggle in. And to share the practices that we're taking to remedy what the earth tells us that we are. When we listen to who God tells us we are, the devil does not have any power, doesn't have a seat at the table. So I want to embody a holy life experience. And in holiness, it's not just at church on Sundays. It's not just at the Bible studies that I hold. It's every facet of my life. So that means I've, I've no longer been drinking alcohol. The last three months, I've been alcohol-free. I'm no longer smoking weed. 
I haven't been engaging in pornography for over a year. And for the men out there and women out there, I, I pray that you take this as a challenge, as a personal challenge to give yourself a week. And for those of you that have already started this journey, I, I applaud you. And I know God does as well, because we need to get back to our roots. We need to look towards a, a divine connection between man and woman. And I'm also willing to have conversations with people who want to argue that narrative because I do want to hold space for all walks and to listen to people where they're coming from, where their heart's at. But I truly believe God created man and woman to be together to create children, more children of God, more opportunities for this world to become heavenly. And in my life, those three things, getting rid of mind-altering substances, getting rid of heart-altering actions, it's changed the way that I look at women. It's brought a woman into my life that I see a future with and that I am stepping into that divine masculinity more and more each day as to being a provider, being a bedrock, being a strength, being compassionate in ways that I think a woman truly deeply desires and that we as men want to fulfill. So faith, the faith aspect of speaking your faith unapologetically, that is a huge part of the fearless aspect of shepherdhood. And then the shepherdhood of walking the road less traveled, protecting people who are not as easily protected and helping them to build the strength and resiliency to protect themselves. Um, I am actively going to be strengthening my faith so that I can step into this world with the full armor of God. And in doing so, there's going to be a lot of flames from the wicked one to try and slow my momentum, to try and, I mean, tale as old as time. People who have stepped forward against evil, evil have, has tried very hard to, to stop that from happening. But I feel like we're in a time where the dam is breaking and more and more people are feeling compelled to a, a deeper understanding of, of what this life really is, why we are in the vessels that we're in and why we have the voices that we do, why we are courageous, why the deep question of why of why are we here? Why is there darkness? And why is there light? So those are, those are the big aspects of the inspire pillar. The love pillar starts with yourself. You've got to learn how to love yourself. And I'm going to be talking a lot about the practices that I have in my life that have helped me to develop a love for myself. Big shout out to the Cassidy family. Big shout out to my community of friends. And then a big shout out to me for showing up and for doing the work physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and that the job is not done, that we continue to ascend and there are days where we don't, and that's okay. But uh, with God on your side, you're able to, to learn what love really is when you open your Bible and you see who Jesus Christ was and you see the different books of the Old Testament and the way that God has worked in our lives and continues to work in our lives is beyond anything that I can tell you. I just invite you to open up the holiest book of holiest books and learn for yourself. Um, the Bible study that we hold, the Fearless Shepherds Bible study, if you want to learn more about that or you want to be a part of it, this is what this is all about. We're trying to connect. We're trying to uh, inspire one another. We're trying to become fearless shepherds. I want to inspire a world of fearless shepherds to step into this world with faith and to inspire their communities to be more like Jesus. So the self-care aspect, physically and mentally, and we'll talk a lot about that in depth, but as a yoga teacher, as a personal trainer, as someone who's stepping into a deeper understanding of nutrition and water and minerals and vitamins and nutritious ways of not only eating well, but the things we consume on these devices. It's very important we are aware of what we put into our bodies, what we put into our eyes, and what we put into our heart. 
So these group sessions are based on constructive, loving advice. And I think when you invite constructive criticism and advice into your life, it's because you're surrounding yourself with people who are living that way. And I've been blessed enough to be in, in the church setting. And I've been in different settings where I'm finding mentors, people who inspire me to be my best self. And I'm having deeper conversations with God who there's no hiding from God's truth. God's going to tell you how it is. And that's the Holy Spirit speaking within you. You have it just like I have it. So the more you can surround yourself with healthy minded, healthy bodied and healthy spirited people, and the more you can have conversation with God, I think the more you're going to find love for yourself, love for your creator. And then guiding people through their traumas, through their fears, through the lies of the devil. The devil is the great deceiver. So knowing why and when these things are coming to the surface, and usually before the biggest breakthrough is the biggest trial. So steadfast and and consistent is what I plan to be with this podcast and what I plan to be in every facet of my life through faith and through love. Next, next aspect is the community. So the third pillar of the fearless shepherds is to inspire people to inspire people. So I want to inspire people to open their Bibles because my voice is, is divinely guided, but the power of the spirit flows through me in a, in a way that only I can portray. But there are so many books in the Bible that I believe there's 60, 66 books going to get more scholarly in the Bible being able to point people in the right direction. But the more you read the Bible, the more inherent wisdom that you gain and the more divine guidance you're able to utilize. You have the sword of the Holy Word and the Word is our weapon against the wicked one. So the lies don't mean anything when they're not hitting. And when we put on the full armor, we have the belt of truth. We know who we are. We have the helmet of salvation. We have the feet, the shoes that carry us on the path less traveled. And we have that sword to fight back. The fearless shepherd fights back against evil. He does not bow down to evil. And uh, in a community, you feel much stronger. So that team mentality is dependent upon us. We are the children of God's army. So no matter the color of your skin, where you're from, or what you believe in, this is a space where we're going to open up and talk and listen and, uh, and grow. I think, you know, right now we're doing things here in LA. I'm from San Diego. I got a big family down there and, and uh, my, my folks are in Texas. I have friends on the East coast. I have friends in Italy. I have friends all over the world. This is going to be a global movement. I, I feel compelled to holding events that encompass mental, physical, and spiritual health. So creating shepherds worldwide is the goal and it's the vision. And I look forward to what this podcast can create in regards to connection, human connection. It's where two or more gather, God is present. And I think this, this electricity that we share when we speak is really just God flowing through us to another that sparks electricity to flow back to us. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed with this life and with these, these vessels that we've been so blessed to be given. And if, if you wake up with air in your lungs, there's nothing to complain about. There are so many people who wish that they could move, who wish that they could speak and who wish they had the freedom to live the way that we do. So taking full opportunity to create community where you are and create change where you are, it ripples into this world. You have the power to change this world for the better. And that's what I wholeheartedly believe because that is what God tells me. And the last pillar of the four pillars is to learn. So God laid down his son for us, the sacrificial lamb. And we have the same power as he did when he raised his son from the dead. It says that in the book of Ephesians. It's chapter one. For those of you that want to want to read the book of Ephesians, it's, it's life-changing. But we were made in the image of God, but we are not God. And that's a discussion that I want to have with a lot of people and a lot of walks. And there was a time in my life when I was starting to buy into that ideology and I felt the Holy Spirit telling me and humbling me in ways that 
help me to realize that I am not. And I do want to have conversations with people from different walks, and I will listen, and I will open my heart to be able to understand where you are coming from. And I think it's important that we have those discussions so that we can find a middle ground. So by learning, we open up our hearts and we put our judgments aside for a moment. And I look at Christianity, I look at a lot of faith as a closed off rather than an open door. And so to invite discussion, to invite uncomfortable conversation into the sphere is important for me to better understand my faith and to better understand humanity. Um, I think when you teach a man to fish, you feed him for a lifetime. But if you're just preaching from this high ground and you're, and you're telling people how, how wrong they are for living the life that they do, it, it cuts you off from opening your heart and listening. And I felt that in, in my early 20s. I'm 29 now. <sighs> Turned 30 January 17th. It's, it's really amazing how time moves. And I feel compelled as I move into the third decade of my life to be a vessel that is for God and by God. And the spirit movement is this kind of brand that I have built towards what I do in regards to fitness, both mental and physical, and now spiritual. I am spiritually moved in every way in every facet of my life. This podcast is a way for me to connect with clients, family, friends, strangers, mentors, and really to open up this global community. We live in an information age now that is a blessing, but it's also a curse. There is so much disinformation and there are so many lies. There's so much deception that it's easy to get lost. So this is going to be a bedrock on scripture, a bedrock on prayer, worship, and there's also going to be a lot of other facets. I'm a man who loves to compete. I love sports. I love culture and music. I love to dance. I love to play. For those of you that know me, I'm a big kid, um, but I'm starting to grow into the man that I believe God made me to be. And... I'm just so excited. I'm so excited to get this podcast off the ground. I'm so excited to get to know each and every one of you. I'm so excited to grow partnerships and sponsorships and, and really start working with the community to better the world. And it starts here in Los Angeles. I live in this city. I see the polarities of this city, the complete abundance and glory and the poverty and the <laughs> debauchery is an understatement, but if you change your internal environment, it's amazing how your external environment starts to change. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue to show up. I'm going to continue to hold space. And I pray that God uses me as a vessel for his word. And that this podcast does for you what it has done for me in regards to my practice with my faith. And that is, that is truly to just let go of our agenda and start to align ourselves with God at the steering wheel. And life becomes a blissful dance when you don't have to create stress that doesn't need to be there. So any and everything that you want in your life, if it is in alignment with your purpose and your gifts and what God has put you on this earth to do, it will be done. It's that simple. I truly believe the power of God is beyond what I can explain to you. But as we get deeper into these episodes, as we talk deeper about faith, as we talk deeper about the power of God, I think you're going to become more aware of it. And I look forward to continuing to grow this community. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out if you're in Los Angeles. And if you're not in the outro, we'll talk more about my socials and ways to, ways to reach out to the movement and uh, many things to come. This summer of 2022 and beyond, we're going to be putting on a lot of different events, fearless health events, my own events, 
and uh, collaborations with a lot of lot of great, great people who are working towards making this world a better place. And that's that's truly why we're here. I mean, to create abundance financially is is a goal, but that is a goal so that we can be more of service and we can step into our our true purpose even deeper. So. I'm going to close in prayer. I appreciate all the listeners, all the support that I've had throughout my 29 years on this planet. And I just, I pray that I can be, be exactly who I'm supposed to be. So dear God, I pray in gratitude and in, in true devotion to you, I pray that we are able to open our hearts as a world to your grace, to your power and to your glory. I pray that this podcast, it touches millions and millions of lives and that it opens many, many hearts to what you can do and what you want us to be. And uh, I pray that I continue to walk in faith, that I continue to align myself with purpose and with, with faith, and that I just continue to stack bricks one day at a time towards becoming exactly who I'm supposed to become. I pray for health pray for prosperity, and I pray for each and every ear that hears my voice, that they can feel and see yours. <sighs> for the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all, and until next time, you stay blessed amazing how quickly conversation goes when you're speaking about life and God. A lot of these questions that can spark fear, spark judgment. That's what this podcast is all about. Really, that's what life is all about, is to, to step into faith with a yearning for knowledge. So if you want to learn more, if you want to donate to the cause, my name is Kyle Cassidy. I am founder of the fearless shepherds and i cannot do this alone so i would love to hear from you more you can follow our movement on instagram or tiktok at fearless shepherds my personal account kyle cassidy fitness on instagram or shoot me an email spirit movement three at gmail.com and i look forward to hearing from you god bless <laughs>